Hello, hello, hello. I just want to say hello to everyone. Um, my name is Adrian Nash, and I'm hosting tonight's event about DEI in the video game industry. Um, before I start, I wanted to just give special thanks to Philip Merrill College of Journalism, uh, Philip Merrill College of Journalism's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, Coordinator, Aaron Vogel, and Nathan here. Um, I really appreciate you all for uh, making this thing come together and holding space for this, and I am just so thankful that this is a thing. And I hope that we can make this continue to happen. Um, I also want to give a special shout out to Cecilia Shelton, who is a professor here. Um, she was the person who let me know about Dr. Gray. And also, <laughs> I would love to give a shout out to Professor Kill as well. She is great. She does techno feminism, and she helped me understand the great importance of knowledge creation on the internet for women. Um, circulating that information and just giving space for that as well. Um, and most importantly, I want to just thank Dr. Gray for coming here today. And I would just love for you to introduce yourself to everyone. Absolutely. Am I coming through okay? Can you hear yes. me all right? Mm -hmm. I am so excited to be here. I'm Kishana Gray, Associate Professor in Writing, Rhetoric, and Digital Studies and African American Studies, Africana Studies at the University of Kentucky. And, you know, this, this is like the the intersection of like my my favoriteest things in the world, gaming and talking about gaming in like theoretical ways. And also just sharing space with dope black women who are doing amazing things in this space. Thank you for having me, Adrian. Thank you for giving me your time. I just appreciate that. Um, so I think we're just gonna hop on in and go Let's ahead and switch to the game. Let's do it. And Twitch looks good too. So I was I was checking out that already. All right. So what are we what are we gonna play? Why this game? First off, let, let me ask you some questions. Why this game? What you like about this game? Okay. So for a long time, your girl was trash. <laughs> <laughs> so I I I honestly I don't know. My it was like a social thing. Like all my friends was playing Call of Duty, and I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. And then I just kind of came around to it. Um, and this is one of the first Black Ops I am, like, really good in. I have a positive KD in this thing. Yeah. I love the team. Um, I like the pacing, the teams yeah. I get on. You know, you always get those bad actors. But overall, I have a really good flow with this. So Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So what do you usually play? What do you usually do? Hmm, so I just do – I do team deathmatch, hard yeah. point, um – Okay. Domination and okay. a, and occasionally uh, capture the flag. Okay, is it possible for us to? Can we play face off just so I can get my trigger finger ready, like quick, just shooting? Okay. So I can prep. Is that okay? We can just prep in that because I know that's like really you know fast, quick mm -hmm. pace kind of game mode. Because I don't know when I played this game. Like okay. I had to do like now you know when you got to do a big update. You ain't played it in a while. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, okay, all right, I appreciate you. And look, listen, I don't think I've played this season, like, at all. Me so neither. I, you I see my little 19. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. So when do you find time? You know, I always get this question, you know, especially with academics. You know, how do we find time, especially with our academic lives, especially to do something like gaming? You know, because a lot of people don't see it as serious. But I'm mm -hmm. like, this is, like, this is, like, important spaces. So how do you find time to do it, and how do you justify, like, doing it? Um, hmm, that is a very good question. I, I have, I will say mine has ebbs and flows. Like, normally, like in the summertime, except for this last summer, I was out at a lot of concerts. But like, I try to find time over the summer, or I try to carve out maybe an hour during the week. But I will say the bulk of my, um, my stuff happens on the weekend. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I would say the bulk of my stuff happens on the weekend, um, but it is hard. It's, it is definitely hard with, you know, things you got to do. Absolutely. What about you? So there was a time where, especially right after dissertation, so this is like 2010, 2011, um, where I was, I think I got so sidetracked with the academic tenure track kind of stuff that I forgot that my gaming space is necessary and important and I had to be in those spaces, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so there was, and also, I mean, I had kids too. So, oh, see, I'm forgetting buttons. Look, I done threw a grenade. I'm 
You know, so I had kids too, and then let me make sure my settings are right. So that's why I had to. Play. Are your kids gamers? I don't mean to, uh, like, ooh, throw you off track. They are. They are. They are. They absolutely are. They love gaming, and I love gaming with them. Oh, oh look, ooh, we gotta right go. Side. We gotta go. Absolutely. We gotta go. Ooh, who is that? Ooh. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 watch out, teammate, teammate. Oh! He got me, he got me. We gotta throw, okay. Okay. we gotta throw Come some on. frags in there. We sure do. Throw them off. Ooh, we sure do, we sure do. Ooh. Let's get back in there. Let's get back in there. Okay. Oh, look at Ooh. us carrying. Look at us carrying. Oh, no, 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 no. Look at us. How? How did she get out of that? She, okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, I think they know we're coming this way. Ooh. Yeah. I'm gonna have to fix my settings. I'll do it in a second. Like my, um... When I press down. Oh, I need help. I need help. I need support. Okay. I just spawn back. I just spawn back. Okay. We gonna, uh, I think they're over there. At, they have to be responding at A. Yeah, they're all responding at A. They are. Ooh, shoot. Stunned myself Ooh, too. Ooh, dang. I didn't Ooh. see her. Yeah, they're all like in that middle thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, what do we have? We got A and B. We, we at least need two of them. Where you yeah. want to go to, um, I am at, oh, I'm at C. Ooh. You're okay, I'm gonna come back there too. Oh, there's two of them. They're, oh, they all back here, yeah. oh my god, yeah, they all back here. Yeah, Woo. they're all back there. All right, okay, I'm spawning back. Ooh. Okay, we got A and C, we could just defend. Yeah, I'm trying to, oh, you, you wanna take, let them have C so we know where they're gonna respond. Yep, 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 absolutely. Oh, oh, no, 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 I got hit by the thing. Just spawn back. Okay, so we got A. I'm gonna go with the teammate. I'm gonna go to B. With them. Ooh, dang. He got me. Ooh, oh my gosh. Head on a swivel. Head on a swivel. Ooh, I'm scared. I'm scared. Yeah, they they come in. I like the fact that they like coming with the strength though. They're not playing oh, the sneaky game. Yeah, right, right. They just running on in. That's why I love this game. And especially with domination too. You know, people can't camp. They can't hide. Like they have to yeah. just come on out with it. I put okay. a um I put a field mic at A. Okay, they're at B. They're coming around. Oh, yeah, they're coming okay. around. Okay. Sneaking around, okay. sneaking around. Okay, I'm gonna hold it. Damn. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, my bad. I'm trying to Oh, dang. <laughs> I know. I know, right? I know. I know. It's hard. You trying to be PG-13. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't get that one. All right. Um but yeah, I don't want to get off sidetrack, but um yeah. when you were saying that um you give time to um game when you can. Yeah. The well, disrespect. So, so that the so there was a long time like on the tenure track, but I think it was also because I was in spaces that didn't value gaming. You know, right. like I had like you know, I had like administrators like coming by like laughing and say you're playing video games. You know, because I had like you know games set up in my office and they mm -hmm. were laughing. And so in my mind, I'm like, oh, okay, well maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And so I think it was a lot of um. How did you how did you overcome that? Oh, y'all can uh, come. I can get these bullets. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was also like a time, like, you know, because like that my my time on the market, you know, kind of just made me feel like what I was doing wasn't important. So, you know, there were all these things around me that was like, this doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Why are you doing this? And I think I started to internalize those messages, you know? And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe I need to figure out something else to do. Maybe I got to do something else. But then I think it was after I wrote the first book, you know, Race, Gender, and Deviance, and Xbox Live. Okay, I'm holding down B. I'm kind of lay here. Ooh, I can, I can there's a sniper. He was laying right. It's Okay, so at C, there's a sniper, okay. uh, and he's laying on the ground. Okay. Switch my weapons. Shoot, oh, shoot, he shoot. thought he was slick. Ah. Okay, we have A. Oh, we have all of them. Oh, never mind. Yeah. We did for five seconds. <laughs> but it was um. You said after you wrote your book. After I wrote that first book, and then I realized like it was important. 
you know, because I was contributing to conversations that a lot of people were needed. You know, I'm not saying that people weren't having those conversations, but I think, uh, you know, in the pairing, you know, a lot of the gaming conversations with the intersectionality, you know, coming from like a, um, like a, a black focus, you know, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. that I realized, I'm like, you know, this is necessary. So let me just, let me stay the course. All right, here we go. Let's go. There we go. We did and, that. And I think that, um, it was, I think I recognized, also I was just busy because I had kids, you know, I'm on tenure track, I'm trying to do the things I needed to do to get tenure, and then I had so much data, and I was like, let me tell some stories, you know, with this data too, so I think I was just in production mode, like writing, mm -hmm. you know, getting stuff out there, and so I had kind of taken a pause, and then I got back in it really right at the precursor, like at the precursor of Gamergate, so I, right before Gamergate had happened, I had kind of collected like a group of, of you know, participants, narrators, you know, some people call them subjects, I don't like to call them subjects, but like this group of um, self-identified white dudes who set the N-word in gaming spaces. And I was gonna really go down like a deep dive to understand the anatomy of, you know, racist speech um, uh, inside gaming spaces. Mm -hmm. And then something had hit me, right? I think somebody, because I was also doing the, the still collecting data for my um, the um, Black Lesbians paper that I did. And then there was something, somebody had just said something so profound, you know, saying, Kishana, thank you for paying attention to our stories. Nobody usually cares about us in these gaming spaces. And that's where I was like, why am I in this space? You know, with I'm like, we've got scholars, you know, you know, sociologists have been told us about the anatomy of racism. You know, we've got, you know, the, you know, people who've talked about, you know, the stratification system and like racial hierarchies, you know, Omi and Wynette, Bonilla Silva, like we had all these people that had already, you know, said significant things about the why of racism. I'm like, the, the because those same things still applied in this space. I'm like, there's mm -hmm. nothing really new. It's just the medium, you know, it's just the way, you know, the modality in which, you know, racism is like deployed. Now, I'm sure there are like, you know, some, a little bit like of nuance because it's an online space and it's a gaming space. But I was like, you know, I want to spend time with these women of color. You know, I want to spend time with these queer folks. You know, I want to spend time with these trans folks because they are saying something that's completely different. You know, because mm -hmm. also with that project that I was doing, you know, it was just like, yeah, I heard that the person sounded black and I just said the N word, but dude, I'm not racist. I got tired of that. I'm like, y'all aren't, y'all, you aren't saying anything that I don't already know. And mm -hmm. so I was like, let me switch gears. And I think that that gave me like renewed. Oh, this map is so small. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it, it's a really rapid map. Okay, they're gonna respond center. Dag, I didn't get that. Oh my gosh. Ooh, they keep throwing flashbangs. Right, because I spawned, got flashed, and then died. Let me see. I think I have. I don't have any kind of. I do tactical maps, maybe. Ooh. Wow, okay, okay. We, ooh. This is this is just mad disrespectful. It really is. Ooh, oh my gosh, behind me! Oh my goodness. Ooh, mm. so we have my nerves bad. But I'm telling you, this game always gets me right for the other game modes. I'm like, listen, can't nobody tell me nothing in these game modes. Woo! Okay, okay, I'm gonna throw a trophy system in the center. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna do anything. This guy's a guy sniping over there. I can't do nothing with this flashbang. Oh, that's you. Lana Rhodes. Okay, Lana Rhodes. Come on, sir. Yeah, I got We still, we're not, we're, we're trailing a little bit. We're doing all right? Mm-hmm. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Oh no, we don't have Minecraft right now. Okay, I gotta reload. Ah, oh, teammates, stay with me. Don't leave, don't leave. Dag, there's a sniper. Oh, okay, okay, these some quick snipers. Okay. Uh, oh what? We're behind us. Okay. Um, yeah. So nothing interesting was 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 happening in the Gamergate space. Right. I don't mean Gamergate, not at the time, because Gamergate wasn't a thing. Could, but nothing could, interesting was happening. Yep, yeah, what's up? Could, could you explain to whoever's listening what Gamergate is? 
Yeah, before I get to Game of Great, let me tell this precursor story. Okay. So at the time, you know, nothing, nothing, there was nothing to be told about white men's spaces in gaming. You know, I really, I was really trying, I'm like, you know, because I also was doing the thing where, you know, I did this work on, you know, these women of color, you know, I was doing this work on, you know, like, you know, queer folks in the gaming space. And then, you know, so many, of course, that academia does that thing of like, well, what about these spaces? And I'm like, okay, we've told plenty of stories about white spaces. You know, we know the white women's space. We know feminist gaming spaces. Like, what about the other spaces? So everybody always was trying to tell me to have like a compar comparison group. So that was also my my attempt at doing it. I'm like, well, it's a very, well, most of these spaces are very racist. They're, they're, they're they have nothing. I, I was in a moment, I was just mad that somebody told me to do that. But then I also realized, somebody said, Keisha, this is your research. You do what you want with your research. And I was like, you're absolutely right. And then what's interesting is that um, uh, Gamergate happened like shortly after that. Um, and then, so what is Gamergate? Basically, I think the short story, you know, the easiest way to tell it is that Gamergate was like a harassment campaign against uh, mostly uh, women inside the gaming space. You know, so folks utilized uh, social media, you know, to sustain these, you know, harassment practices. Um, but I think the most important story that Gamergate has to tell was that Gamergate gave us like the, it was like the, um, the foundation and the template um, for what would come for the rise of the alt-right and the election of, um, of Donald Trump. Um, because so much of the misinformation and disinformation and all the fake news, you know, that was, um, that was sustained in digital spaces, we actually had a template and a precursor inside gaming. Uh, so I think that's one of the stories that often gets missed, that we don't pay enough attention uh, to gaming spaces. Um, so I think that's probably, that's probably like the easiest way to, easiest way to, to, to let folks get a sense of that. Oh, let me back out. I gotta fix my settings too. Okay. You know, I never thought of it that way at all. I really do appreciate you sharing that because I didn't think that um, that was a precursor to the yeah. election at all. I, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, you know, because a lot, so many of those folks realized that they could basically, it's like the hate raids, you know, the hate raids that we have now, you know, those were essentially were hate, hate raids, you know, they would, mm -hmm. they would mob folks like on Twitter, you know, they would, you know, they would flood, you know, prominent, you know, women in the space, they would flood their timelines, they would flood their Twitter pages, they would retweet. And a lot of times, and, and these weren't, uh, it wasn't a lot of folks, I think somebody did like an analysis of like all the users with Inside Gamergate on Twitter in particular, and they found that it was a very small group of folks, you know, but they were utilizing the affordances of the technology to make it seem like there was like a massive uh, concerted effort. You know, there was like a critical mass and that just wasn't the case. You know, so a lot of bots were used. And so bots, that was the template that we also saw with the rise of the alt-right and misinformation. So gaming gave us that precursor. And I wish we would pay like a little bit more attention to, um, uh, I'm speaking of, this is a school of journalism, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't think we talk enough about the role that journalism has in, uh, in Gamergate and how, you know, a lot of these news outlets in the gaming space actually facilitated some of the harassment um, that was levied upon, uh, you know, like a lot of women. And also how the, how the gaming um, uh, platforms, uh, they excluded a lot of perspectives, a lot of just diverse perspectives. Uh, there's been a time where it was hard for like women to be writers and even harder, you know, for folks of color, you know, black folks to be like writers inside the space. So I think there's a lot of conversations that we need to have inside like journalism, especially gaming journalism that I don't think we're having. And I remember, I don't, I remember talking to somebody, um, I think in my, my previous institution, like around like, you know, journalism um, and that there basically was no conversation like around gaming at all. And I'm mm -hmm. like, how, I'm like, gaming is like one of the biggest platforms you know, massive audiences, massive consumption and consumer practices that that's happening. And I'm like, y'all haven't thought to have a conversation, especially like in journalism. And I'm like, and mm -hmm. therein, you know, lies some of the problem, you know, so hopefully mm -hmm. folks can, you know, start to have critical conversations like uh, around that. What yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, I realized like I was growing up and I had access to Game Informer just because I used to shop at GameStop, you know, and all that stuff and I would cons I still have my game informers at home and it's it's really it's really interesting seeing where I am in my life at this point because I didn't know that that was journalism like I just thought that they just like mm. came together and they were like this is the game this is yeah. what it's about like here's some tips and tricks but like someone sitting down with me and saying like oh like this is something serious concrete has value um you know 
I grew up in a ma- ma- uh, majority minority county, and it just in a, at home I grew up with female gamers. My mom games, my grandmother games, but it was just always seen like what you were saying as this hobby, this extracurricular yeah. activity that you do, not something that you're able to um, commercialize like the ninjas of the world or. That's right. um, you know, all uh, like the like the big names on Twitch and you know other platforms. Um, and I, I remember I used to follow the Rad Brad before the Rad Brad got as big as he is now. And it, I just yeah. I en- I enjoy him. Like he is so he, yeah. I love him. But it's just like seeing other people commercialize it and not knowing how to tangibly do that for myself, like in an yeah. economically sound way. Um, yeah. So. Um, I guess yeah. another question I have for you is how were you able to not only pursue something that you're very passionate about, but also be able to pay your bills, make your ends meet, you know, do what you need to do for yourself? Yeah. Um, it was touch and go in the early days. When I say early days, I mean, it's basically what, like about 10, 12 years ago. Um, and a lot has changed, you know, in that time frame. Uh, I did hardcore. I didn't ask. You want a hardcore, right? Um, no, but I can I can get with it. I'm gonna well, move a little this, slower, but it's it's okay. After this, we'll we'll switch to regular. My bad. Um, oh, you're, you're fine. It's just I, my pacing. I gotta like hit the corners and okay. be like, you know, <laughs> actually be like, That's well, I gotta bad. pay attention because they will ca- <laughs> that will shoot you in the toe. <laughs> she said they gonna shoot you in the toe. Oh, hardcore. I know that's all right. Um. But I think, uh, you know, it was touch and go, you know, in the early days, you know, people really didn't care about gaming and the folks that did care about gaming, those were probably some of our most elite institutions, right? You mm-hmm. know, so of course we had like MITs, you know, the USCs, you know, those spaces where, you know, some of the uh, folks who have been in gaming, you know, have been in there for a while, you know, so Dimitri Williams, you know, Mia Consalvo, you know, Canada, Canada actually is way ahead of us when it comes to, you know, like engaging in like ga- uh, gaming scholarship, you know, so we had like these powerhouse like folks in the space. Um, and then, um, b- but, you know, our other institutions weren't weren't opening up space for for folks a lot of them didn't have focuses like on games they you know because we all they also didn't have like a focus like on digital media you know it was hard to get folks to care about this stuff and i'll say you know twitter was like the space where um i think that forced forced like academia to pay attention you know um especially with with um what game mode is this what am i playing it's it's um it's the it's the one where you gotta uh do the bomb I hate this mode. Wow, he was laying on the ground. Oh my gosh, I hate this mode. So what do I have, I have to keep them from deploying so, the bomb? Yeah, right? you have to. Yeah, you have to. What happens is they they get the bomb. Oh, I, you, kill it's, my I think I think it's dirty bomb, and you have to make sure they don't deploy it. And if they do, you have to um, unarm it before the time limit, or okay. you lose the round. Okay. Oh my gosh, I know there's enemies. Oh, I'm t- um. Terrible. Um, yeah, so so we, a lot of us had to just create our own fields and just wait for academia to catch up to care about this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the same, same for Black Digital Studies, you know, where we, we basically paved the way and created entire fields. And, oh, my gosh, we created entire fields. And then, you know, I'm thinking about, like, the last couple of years, think about all the job ads that we've had um, where, you know, they're looking for like black digital studies right you know Mm -hmm. and that's i think that's huge um but if we we would have let you know academia um if we would have let academia tell the story then we all would have picked something else we wouldn't have been here we wouldn't have saw the value in twitter we wouldn't have seen the value in gaming protect me please i'm sorry to rub you i'm diffusing no no you're fine you're fine you're fine you're fine (laughs) oh so that's not the game's not over no, we no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They're, they're gonna plant they're another going one. To yeah, they planted oh another gosh. one, so we gotta go get that one now. Oh, gosh. oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna try. Somebody protect oh me. Oh my gosh. Okay, I don't know. I, don't I, know I tried. Name, so sorry. It's okay. So he, he threw a, a, a grenade. So. It's so small. Oh, okay, right okay, okay. Oh, I'm gonna defuse it. I'm gonna defuse it. Okay, it's covering okay, I'm me. coming down. Oh, I think I got it. 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 I got it. Oh, I got it. That's what's up. Yes. Let's go. But Is we got to. Is the game still going? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, we just got to keep defending. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah okay, we're just, it. and then it'll um it'll we'll switch sides, and then okay. we have to um. They're doing got pretty it. good though. I like I like how they're you know they're they're, they're coming outside. Absolutely. Oh, he was on the ground. Whew. Okay, he's gonna come through that. Oh, uh, yeah, he's gonna come through that door for sure. He got. Are you him. A or B? I'm at B. I'm at okay, B. I'm at A. Okay, I'm at A. I'm at, I'm at no, I'm with B. you. I'm with you. I'm behind you. Yeah, I'm trying to catch them when they spawn for some weird reason. I know it's real disrespectful, but... <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Let's get spawn cubed. <laughs> oh, there it be. Okay, go on there. Yeah, we got to defuse it. Okay, okay. Okay. They are throwing so much. I can't see. I can't see anything. No, 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 don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. Yes, I got it, I got it, I got it. That's what's up. Let's go. Oh, they got it again. Hold they're, on, who's here? Yeah, they're about to plant. We just gotta not let them plant. Okay. Yeah, as long as they just don't plant. But I ain't gonna lie, it doesn't take a lot of time to plant. Okay, there we go. Ooh. We got that. We got that. I ain't gonna Ooh. lie. I was the only one defusing bombs, though. Like. I, listen, I ain't know what to do. So, <laughs> I mean. Like you, run, like, like you run up, and then you just hit square, and then it just starts to do the thing. But you can't I'm do scared. anything. I'm scared. I didn't even want to go over to the bomb because I couldn't see. It was smoke everywhere. Listen, I'm just, I'm scared in this game mode. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, we can see. Like, they getting <laughs> active. He, this man was getting active. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, game, um, academic, academic spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um... I think academia still has a while to go, um, mm -hmm. so we got plenty of bomb now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we got to be disrespectful. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Who has a bomb? I think I got a bomb. Every I, I think everybody does. You just have to walk up to it and hit square. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to. Okay. Um... okay. And I'm guessing the the best way to do this is probably to. Yeah. Oh. Wait yeah. I'm trying to plan it. I'm trying to plan it. I think I'm doing it. Yeah, we've already planted one at B. We just got, they can't, we just don't want them to diffuse. So if you plan, an, oh, yeah, we planted two. We're, mm, they better take this L. Let me spawn them back here. Oh, that's so uh, yeah, we about to get them. Yeah, but academia needs to catch up. You know, oh, mm -hmm. oh, somebody's here. Oh, time added. Bomb site destroyed. Okay. So, okay, so I think they defuse. I think. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, yeah, they defuse mine. I killed them, mama. Mm -hmm. Oh, who's oh, somebody shooting? Somebody shooting. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, they blew it up. Oh, we can't do B no more. That sucks. Oh, no, really? They holding A down. Okay, we need to throw some grenades or something in there. No, that's a good thing. We blew it up. That's ours. That's that's good. Oh, there's a guy right? here. We planted the bomb. Isn't that a good yeah. thing? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it has to be like defend. It has to turn blue. If it's red, um, that me. Oh, okay. I thought that was not a friendly. Okay, so I'm in here. They're, I'm coming around the other way. Okay. I feel like they're camping in the corners waiting for you to run in. Oh, I think so. Right. Yeah, dog, you didn't hear that? Okay, I'm reloading. Reload, hurry up. Oh my gosh, okay. it takes forever for the street sweeper to reload. Oh, I got somebody. Oh, oh don't kill my teammate. Oh, did I kill the teammate? I'm about to plan it. I'm about to plan okay. it. I'm about to okay. plan it. I'm about okay. to plan it. Okay, okay. good. Start. Okay, good. We just got to protect it. I got killed on it. Dang. We just gotta protect it. We can't let them defuse. Okay. Ooh. I think events like this are useful, you know, to show, yeah. you know, like our administrators and deans and to show academia how significant and why mm -hmm. this is like important. You know, mm -hmm. so even though like we're just playing, you know, we might just be playing a video game, right? Ooh, let's get in there. We got fifteen seconds, they're doing something. Yeah. 
But I will say, like, having events like this and inviting, you know, great people like you, you know, I would love to see you compensated, you know, for your time. And I think, oh, I killed Friendly. I killed you. I'm sorry. I thought I needed to do something. Yeah, go ahead. And I realized, you know, that to me is another hurdle. Like, I think colleges lean really heavily on alum, which is not a bad thing. I just think when it comes to topics like this, you know, you're not, especially when the majority of the people that have been contributing contributing to the space are not minority based. I think it's gonna be a hodgepodge kind of thing. Like you go here, you find a person, you go there, you find a person. And it's gonna take, you know, some financial compensation for people's time. And I think that's another aspect to, yeah. you know, what we were talking about as far as like being able to sustain yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and it goes into, you know, we got to be, you know, I think about, you know, some of these administrative spaces. I think about, you know, how baseline some of the conversations are. A lot of these folks have been operating. Let me take that out. I did not like that game mode at all. Let me fix that. But they have been operating in this traditional space for so long. Um, and they really rely on folks like us to help them add to their conversation, to add to their understanding, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so for instance, how do we translate this event that we're doing right now, you know, for, for a chair or a dean? So they realize, like, this is significant. This is part of our scholarship. This is part of our service. We're contributing, you know, to, to communities and reaching out to communities, you know, because it's not legible to them. You know, so many folks are like, you know, what's Twitch? What's streaming? You know, I'm mm -hmm. still having, like, basic conversations you know, with a lot of these folks. And I'm trying to like elevate. I'm like, it's important already. Don't you realize that, it, that it's important? And the thing that I hate doing, that I find myself doing actually uh, often, I find myself having to compare gaming to something else, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember early on having like a conversation in like the media studies communication space. And, you know, they were like hiring for like another like TV scholar or something like that. And I was like, well, what about a digital media scholar? And then so many people were like, oh, that's nonsense. That, that like they dismissed it and diminished the importance of the space. And this was probably even before, I mean, black Twitter was popping, but it was probably like, like right on the precursor of like, you know, with Black Lives Matter and the movement for Black Lives, like kind of like just, you know, evolving to like something like huge and big, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it takes those significant moments like to, for people to recognize like, hey, this is social movements. Hey, this is, you know, we have to connect what's happening in the digital spaces to the things that exist already for them to see the lineage and the pathway of like why they need to value you know what's happening in like digital and like gaming spaces so what i often do especially in the gaming space you know i'm like so for streaming i like in streaming so like just us watching something on tv uh, and you know because i remember some i had a colleague that was like you know why would what my 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 grandson is just sitting and watching somebody on youtube all day i was like that's fine. I was like, does your partner sit and watch TV? Did you watch soaps? Did you watch reality TV? Do you watch the, the Super Bowl? Do you I'm like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, you know, and they really can't fathom, you know, the similar pathways and trajectories of a lot of these things for podcasts. You know, I had to like liken podcasts to radio. I'm like, y'all grew mm -hmm. up listening to radio. We grew up listening to podcasts. You know, so I think it's always important to to connect the historical lineage, like of all these digital spaces, to like what's happening right now in the streets. You know, that's why I love, you know, Catherine Knight Steele's like work so much, you know, because, you know, she puts that like in black digital feminism, you know, she puts, she makes those connections like for us so that we can recognize just how significant these digital spaces are because they have a historical pathway. What game modes am I picking? Team Deathmatch, Domination, Hardpoint. Capture the flag. And capture the flag. Okay. Also, we have someone in chat that just says, what's good <laughs> to you? What's good? What's good? <laughs> um, the screen name is Raising, R Rising Sages. Raising Sages. Shout outs to Will. That's that's William Frey. He's a, he's a PhD student at Columbia in the, oh. in the school, social work department, social work. My bad. I don't know which one. So he's like doing really awesome things like in the space of whiteness. I just retweeted something. You know, he's kind of curating and compiling like resources, like especially, you know, for folks who want to like understand like whiteness and, you know, anti-racist practices and stuff. So he's really doing some dope stuff in the space. Is he going to play with us? Like, is he online? What's he doing? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm going to see if he's he coming comments. To chat with us? I guess so. Coming. All right. Let me see. Let me, Let me see. This. Do I have Twitch open? Let me find the chat. Oh, here we go. Chat. 
And hold on, let me check this. Oh, he said he's on. He says, "Yeah, I'm on." Ah, that's what's up. All righty. Okay, yeah, we can. Cool, yeah, cool, he. Cool. Yeah, he can definitely cool, hop cool. on in like that. Oh, awesome. cool, cool, cool. And I see Jerome Wick is in here too. <laughs> I love it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, that's what's up. All right, good deal. So we, uh, if y'all are listening in the chat, we are gonna be playing core. Uh oh, hold on. Didn't okay. Team deathmatch, domination, hard point, and capture the flag. Right? Yes. Okay. All hold right. On. You want me start it? You you want me wait? Yeah, you can go ahead. I'm just um, I'm just checking to make sure everything is good uh, on my end, and I'm getting all the chat. I don't know. I just I got real paranoid. Yeah. That's okay. The stream looks good, so we're still coming through on the stream. I see the chat's working. Um, okay. Oh, Terps yeah. Esports. Uh, that is awesome. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. All right. I'm trying to figure out how I can see both chat streams. I'm trying to figure out. I don't know how to do that, actually. Um, and I need to know how to do that because people are interacting. And Here, Let me back out. You want me back out of the game real quick? Yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely. Let me... Absolutely. That's no problem. Yeah, people are saying everything looks good. Somebody just, um, I'm psychic. I'm physics. Sorry. Physics. Hold yeah. On, let me. Hi, Javon. It's so good. Jay Stony One is in the space with us. Jay Stony One's amazing I individual. If I can remember, I know you're program coordinator for something at Johns Hopkins. I'm so sorry. I know you work with with Professor Otis in that space. So please put that in there, Javon. You know what we do. We want to shout out folks who are you know in these academic streets, especially doing this gaming kind of stuff. So shout okay. out. You know what you do. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Physics, the, the director of esports at yes, Maryland. Yes, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hi. I appreciate appreciate that yes Hi. yes they said the stream is great awesome appreciate okay that. cool i just want to make sure i'm getting the comments so i can like interact with y'all i just want to be sure um dr sergario brack okay sergio brack is that your name oh god i said that wrong okay it's yes okay. it's all good yeah. it's all good awesome okay. love that okay. Right. Oh, Come on, so academic much. streets. <laughs> Absolutely. Woo <-woo. laughs> but, um, Dag, um, what was I going to say to what you were saying about, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to speak on, like, gatekeeping because I feel like that's yeah. a big part of what you're mentioning. And I think about, um, like, who's in animation heavily, who's in right. um, special effects. And I think that does play a role in who is able to commercialize yeah. and um, just yeah. get the whole thing going. And I think that's why sometimes when um, certain groups are overlooked, yeah. it, I sometimes think it's because on all the other levels, it's over. It's, people are also being overlooked, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, pathways matter, right? Mm -hmm. We have to think, you know, pathways have an origin. So what's the origin of pathways, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so when we think about like networking, like who are you connected with? Who do you have access to? But also who are gonna, who are the folks that are gonna advocate for you too, right? And I think that's what's so important when I think about, you know, what you just said, you know, a lot of our spaces are still, especially in the tech world, they're still overwhelmingly white, overwhelmingly male. And if we don't like disrupt or, you know, I don't wanna say like disrupt those pathways, but if we don't insert and interject, you know, different ways of engaging, then we're gonna continue to have those kinds of practices and, and those kinds of like folks in those mm -hmm. spaces. It's not pushing those folks out, right? It's just like making space for others, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the, one of the basic, biggest examples, I think that the, the collegiate esports um, out league or somebody just had like a panel and they had a panel of like all white men, right? And which is fine, you know, which is which is important, you know, but we have to like recognize, you know, there are like different perspectives in the space. And so what they did, which I don't know if it was better or not, but they they said, oh, we've got another panel and that's where all the other folks are. Right. And mm. I don't think that they get that. The problem is, is that you, we are an afterthought. We are not the main conversation because those main conversations are the ones that set the tone. Those are the ones where that, that make the decisions. Those are the ones that have the power. And then, you know, this othering is kind of, it's paternalistic, right? It's infantilizing, it's demeaning, it's devaluing where you're just like gonna add us as an afterthought and just, you know, hope, hope that we, we don't get mad about it. You know, a lot of people were saying, hey, well, at least y'all got this panel, but it's still, you know, we're still like accepting like the scraps and ex expect, you know, uh, just accepting like the pennies like in the space. Jerome Wick is such an amazing name. That's a fantastic name, Jerome Wick. Oh 
gosh. And then um, I'm Physics said that they were the on the second part of that panel that you just mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad folks remember that because I remember it vaguely. I just thought, I was like, oh, very interesting. And I don't engage in those conversations because I think it's not going to stop the work and the importance of the stuff that we do. But I just, you know, I'm just thinking about like, hey, let's have some inclusive practices. You know, let's mm -hmm. have, let's make space for everybody. Don't just leave folks as an afterthought. But what, what did, um, what did um physics say? Ooh, hold up, hold up. Somebody about to shoot me in my face. Oh, you were on part two of that panel? I yeah. love it. I love that. Oh, oh coming up. I love that. I forgot. It's four. It's not hardcore. Okay, y'all, I'm, I'm at the top of the stairs here. Oh, behind okay. us, behind us, Will, if you can hear me. Oh. He's oh. right there. He's right there at the top. I got ear holes. Oh, I hope he doesn't shoot me in my back. Oh, shoot. I had a feeling. Okay, somebody said, question, are you going to tie into an intro? Hold up. Are you going to tie into bird in, hmm. I can read it. We're gonna is it, it Blurcon. Blurcon. Oh, Blur, Blurcon, which is growing event and brings a ton of esports and gaming. I don't know anything about Blurcon. So. I know, I know. There's a um. I know, I know. It's in Texas. It's in Arlington, Texas, because I thought it was in Arlington, Virginia, because I got excited about it. And um, it's a conference that's coming, I think, in July. It's like two days or something like that. And they're really pushing. Um, diverse uh, a diverse panel there y'all got gonna realize too i'm not invited to most spaces so when i do get invited i'm really shocked that when it happens <laughs> so i have no I, I don't know about that space a lot of people don't also don't see me as like legible to esports you know especially mm -hmm. since my trajectory is like more so game studies um so so hopefully that's a good space i'm glad to hear that you know they're being inclusive in their practices there so shout out to blurcon and feel free to drop links and to you know tell folks about blurcon Feel free to do so. And also, it's hard to make those kinds of conferences like legible to academia. You know, like academia that really privileges and values, you know, academic conferences. Okay, okay. And, um, okay, good. good. Let me so, go. Jay Stone said that they're going to be there at BlurtCon in Virginia. So, they're going to, they're doing Beautiful. research on black college esports players, and I'm citing Dr. Gray. A ton. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. See, I love folks like that. Cause I listen. These are my folks. They gonna make sure I'm in them spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely have. I've, I've referenced you in my work and um, my uh, my minor in uh, rhetoric and professional Absolutely. writing because it was just like I was like I couldn't not do it. Like it was just so yeah. apparent that it was just like like you said there was no one else having these yeah. conversations. So I was just like. Right. You know, super like, yeah, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Javon, you want to come in here and play with us? Ooh, do you one of the first. Somebody ran down the escalator. I don't know where he okay. went. Good job. Good job. I'm behind another teammate. Laquandale. I'm behind Laquandale. Come on, Laquandale. Oops, somebody's here. <laughs> Somebody's behind me. Shoot with this weapon. I am not doing great at all. Oh, Akil, oh, oh, Akil? oh, Akil said hi. Oh, hi, Kill. I love a kill. <laughs> me too. Oh, me too. Yeah, I participated in his study like a That's minute ago. Up. Yeah, I was really like, yes. Love yeah. it. I love that. I love it. But, um,. But yeah, I, I definitely agree. Like, I remember when I was coming, like, I don't even, like, I don't, I wonder from like a, um, like I'm a first generation student. So like when I was telling my family coming out of high school, like, hey, I'm gonna go to art school. And I mean, they were super with it, like from a, oh, you're telling me perspective. But then when it started getting tangible, like, you know, you figure out how much, you know, tuition is, all those yeah. tangibles. And I realized how much everything was, ooh. Somebody is sniping. Oh, absolutely. And I realized, like, wow, I can't, I can't afford this right now. Yeah, that's real talk. That's real talk. And I want to shout out Akil. Akil's at UC Irvine, completing, dissertating right now. Just got a dissertation completion grant. So shout oh, out to you, Akil. Sure. Um, I don't. I could be saying this wrong. 
Pong, Farrell, I would love for you to um, share anything you will be, you know, willing to share. I can drop my email. I don't even know if this is going to, it's going to come under my name, though. Jamin, what's up? What's up, Jamon? Jamin, I, I always do this because I think every time we talk, we have a conversation about where the emphasis on your name is. But at USC, doing amazing stuff in this race and identity and culture space uh, in gaming. So glad to have you all in this space. Y'all just play. Who gonna play? Call, who gonna play with us? Somebody hop into the um, hop into the um, the party with us. I think we probably got space for maybe like a couple more folks. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. Where he at? Ah! Where is he at? Where'd he go? Did he get him? Or he just ran? I think he ran. Yeah, I think he ran. Oh, wait, what is this? Okay. But yeah, I guess my question to you is like for people who maybe like first generation, maybe yeah. not have all the resources available to them, what is any advice that you would have for, you know, our younger... Well, I'm young, too. I don't know why I'm acting like I'm not in the bunch. <laughs> like, people who are of college age, you know, trying it out, trying to figure it out, because that's definitely something I have been really struggling with. Yeah. I think um, one of the things that we just got to remember is that the hustle doesn't change for us. Um, so just like we was hustling in the streets, we're going to be hustling in these academic streets, right? We're going to have to work hard. We got to work harder. All those, none of that changes for us being first generation folks, right? Mm -hmm. But I think also what, I think also what's important is that we establish like networks of communal support, right? So I'm just thinking like all those folks, you know, I just shouted out, you know, we're all like in like a Twitter chat, you know, so if something's going on and something going down, you know, they, they're reaching out about how to get support and how to get help, you know, folks who might need us to like read drafts of something, you know, we're like, hey, I'm around, I'm free, we can do that. So I think those uh, those communal networks are important for the survival and for the for the health and safety um, of us like in these spaces. So we can have like places to go where we're protected and shielded because it's gonna be a lot of nonsense that happens out here, right? And so you need to have like a go-to space where you're just like, hey y'all, this just happened to me, can you help me process it? Like I had to do that, I'm like, cause I couldn't just mm -hmm. be popping off all the time, you know, in, these, in, in faculty meetings, you know, I couldn't just keep mm -hmm. popping off all the time. I was like, you know, these folks, uh, they better fire me and I ain't gonna be able to pay my bills. So I had to really like, like learn how to get in and get along. Like as much as it sucks, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna play the game because you know, I, we need a job at the end of the day, right? Most of mm -hmm. the stuff is just not that serious. You know, we just need a job at the end of the day. Um, and so I think that in those small communal spaces, that's where we, we, um, we do the work of protecting people and we do like the work of you know ensuring that folks have like access to things so i know whenever i see like a, a job ad or something or i see like a fellowship ad or a scholarship opportunity or any chance i get where i can give somebody some money to do something you know i'm gonna do that and so i know we need more oh my god there we go there we go okay i'm finally figuring out this gun on the snap but i think we need more of that you know because Academia, they are, they don't believe in, you know, mutual support and sharing resources. You know, they hoard opportunities. They hoard money. You know, they're not, they're going to give it to their few, you know, the few tokens that they actually like. You know, they're not going to mm -hmm. open it up, like, for all of us, like, to be be in the spaces. So, you really got to mm -hmm. identify some key mentors in the space where you know who's going to be working for good for you. You know, it's going to be, you know, have your back and let you know if there's some missteps. Cool. Be like, hey, hey, Kishan, you need to calm it down in this space. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be like, oh, okay, okay, I will, I will. Um, but also somebody who will like support you when you're like, no, I'm about to cut everybody out right now. We still, <laughs> you still gonna hold me down. Oh, dang it. Oh, that was a good airstrike. Oh my gosh. Jesus. Dang, I had all the opportunity in the world. Oh my gosh. It's okay though. <laughs> it's okay though. I gotta look. Cause I... And things don't get better. I also, I mean, there might be some flashes of like, ooh, yes, finally, I don't have to worry about money. Ooh, yes, I don't have to worry about this. But mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, some, some of us, especially where, you know, class mobility is not on our side, you know, a lot of times our situations still may, are the same. Um, because a lot of us, you know, think about the caretaking that we do. We, we, our parents are asking us for money, you know, like all those things, like, you know, they don't change, you know? So I think people just have to have a realistic outlook on what it, what academia means because, you know, it works, it works differently for like a lot of folks. Behind you, um, Sapita. I think we're going to take oh. an L on this one, but... I'm struggling. I was getting them at one point. I had it. I got, I got the artillery, but because this map is so enclosed, I couldn't get nothing for the free. Yes. We did all right. We did okay. I was struggling. <laughs> Somebody said, hey, cussing, cussing everyone out on occasion burns calories. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. 
That's right. <laughs> yeah, so I like I I love that sh- that um little short mini series on Netflix, The History of Curse Words. It just it gives so much validity to everything. Yeah. <laughs> But I did have two questions that were sent in um, mm-hmm. prior, and I did want to address them in case you know the per- you know they came or had time today, you know yep. just to. So one of the questions is this is a long one, with the cancellation of E3 and the large shift to live stream and online events, do you believe that it will now be easier or harder for video game journalists to create connections, contacts, sources? with developers now that there is no longer a physical space to make them. How would you make connections nowadays in this digital world? Nah, I feel like your job just got easier. Think about how inaccessible like E3 is. Think about how inaccessible GDC is. Those are, it costs thousands of dollars to just get access into those spaces, right? And think about how hard that might be even for like smaller presses and like smaller outlets. Like, you know, like your um like your your college press, your college outlet. So like if you're not the New York Times, if you're not watch the Washington Post, then you ain't you don't have like money and big budgets behind you so you can get into those spaces. So in my mind, I feel like this is like the opportunity to think about different pathways, especially to you know, to get access to like a lot of those folks. But I think we also have to um, think about, you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? Mm-hmm. Think about, you know, like the, the opportunity that this might present, right? Um, because earlier I was talking about, you know, how a lot of game journalism is very mainstream, you know, they privilege and prioritize, you know, a lot of the AAA industries, right? So I think this, this is like a moment where you can like really rethink what that model is. Like, who are you talking to? Whose stories are you elevating? Who are you connected to? And you have to think like, is, is the story to be told like the people, you know, who are like at that big budget studios or is, or something else? Like think about all the indie folks that would just talk Mm -hmm. to you for free about the dope things that they're doing, right? Like why, why won't we elevate those? Now I know, I understand like you know a lot of a lot of these outlets they require you know the clicks and you know they need hits and you know you need like folks coming to like the page like all those kind of like analytics to, like justify stuff so I get you know there's it's a business model like at the end of the day but I also think that you all have the power to reshape how we think about so many things and I just don't mm-hmm. I, I wish I don't know maybe I'm just naive um, you know, I, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't go through a school of journalism, you know, so maybe I'm naive to this, but I just feel like, you know, journalists don't realize the power that they have to shape narratives enough. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause think of, think about like so many of us, like we spend time doing media analysis about how media has shaped something. So y'all have the power. And I think a lot of people, I don't know if they're, they're just humble. I don't know if they feel like that because their power is taken away by like an editor or something that they, they don't have the power, but y'all have got power to, to reshape it. So I think you just use this as an opportunity to think about, okay, what are we doing can we do things in a different way um should we and you know how how different can it look how inclusive can we make it you know Mm -hmm. it's an opportunity i definitely agree like one of the events i wanted to do in addition to this is have um some of the polish indie studios i've been able to like see through some of the twitch streamers that i follow um like it's this game called chernobylite that i was really feeling and it was just a very different perspective on like what happened in chernobyl yeah and i thought and it it didn't pit america in the best light and i felt like that was something i don't hear every day you know what i'm saying (laughs) like i appreciate that and the team is so small and i talked to nathan about it and he said that he would you know we're going to figure something out but i i definitely agree with you like that's something that has crossed my mind too because like i like i would love to hear what somebody else has to say about like an event that we may not even be considerate about that's or right. be privy that's right. to. That's somebody. right. And game journalism is very Western Eurocentric too. Mm-hmm. You know, think about all the dopeness that's coming from the global south. You know, I love following there's some folks like in Nigeria, like the Nigerian game scene that I follow. Oh my gosh. I got him. Oh, good. Thank you. And then there are some, uh, like Brazil, like the Brazilian game scene is dope. You know, like we're always just kind of telling like the same old stories. And, you know, the best stories are not even coming, you know, from the States. Most yeah. Of the time. Yeah. I, yeah. Like the, I would say, like, I, I, I'm i always blown away by um, Naughty Dog with uh, The Last of Us because I just yeah. love how they they make everyday life, you know, like even though, you know, it's an apocalypse, just the, the ability to just show the natural um, you know, in engagement of like diverse people, um, non-binary, like, I just like how they do that. And it's so, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like they're working hard. It's just like, they're good at just writing stories that are genuine, you know? 
don't don't read my next piece that's coming out then because I'm kind of critical of the last of us. So oh no, 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 I read it. I'm I'm definitely open to perspectives because I oh, I have gotten in many conversations with my friends. They was not feeling that part too. So I'm I really I'm, I'm here for it. I wanted to love it. I wanted to yeah. love it. Yeah, I, I mean I, I I totally understand why people did not love it. Like it was hard to love. That. It was hard to love. It was it was hard hard to love. Hard. I mean. I just, I don't know. I'm just so okay with people not agreeing with stuff or, like, agreeing with yeah. what I think all the time, so I can accept it. But I still have my little slither of, like, dag, I wish y'all would have, you know, threw something in there. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm real open to stuff, but, like, I kind of wanted just a little something for the something. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I don't know why this thing is so stiff. Oh, my gosh. Am I tripping? Maybe. I think I'm hesitating. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I'm hesitating because this is my old reliable. Um, who, let me see if I got. And somebody said The Last of Us is a great example. I think the storytelling was authentic, at least in Ellie's perspective. Yes, I do. I think I, I agree. I think that um, natural, like being having really strong feelings of hate and like how you respond to that and it not being pretty and giving light to that, like absolutely. Oh, Derek shot. They sure did kill all the folks of color and all the queer folks and stuff. You know, they killed yeah. everybody, didn't they? It was a, it was a, we had to save white women all the time, right? We at the expense of us, right? You know, I did not like the treatment of black women in that game, at all. At, yeah, at I all. didn't, I didn't like how they. Um... Oh, okay, okay, okay. We back, we back. We doing something. <laughs> something is happening. How are we doing in this game? I feel like I'm doing terrible. Like, Y'all just gotta carry me. Y'all just gotta carry me. We are. Ooh, hold up. Oh, Mark. Dag, I I'm doing pretty good. Okay. We're like two points as a team behind, so it's okay. not terrible. Okay. We can bring it back, but they are they're playing the sneaky game. Yes. So. They're right here. They're right here. Oh my gosh, my weapon. And they're very congested. Anything. Oh my gosh, they're all down. To, I don't even know. Oh, they're in the center. Out. Yes. Come on, come out, come out, come out, come out. I want to give you something. Come outside. <laughs> come outside. Come on outside. Just I was trying to. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, they're going to shoot me. They're going to shoot me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm alive. I'm not alive. Dag, 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 dag. Dag, I'm messing up. I'm messing up big time. Um, let's see. Um, have y'all played Deathloop some? Yes, I do think Deathloop had great POC representation. I loved it. Like, I, I haven't had the opportunity, though, because I got my PlayStation 5 mad late. And I had to actually pay that scalping price that I was not excited about. Oh. But I had I had to do it for my grandma, though. Like, my grandma, she's a big Ratchet and Clank person. I had to do it for her. I had to do it, absolutely. And she had got her knee replacement, so she was just at home. And oh, I was yeah, like, it was time. It was time. I was yeah, like, had yeah. To do it. She was on my back about it, too. She was like, when, so, you know, when are you going to get the PlayStation? I love it. Yeah, I hate Wait, this. Down yeah, I hate the scalpers. The scalpers are like destroying. the worst people ever. Just, just, it's just, it's trash. It's destroying. Honestly, like once I paid and then I saw the PlayStation, I was like, "Dad, this is what people paying all that for? It's not even fun no more." Kind of took the flavor Ooh. out of my mouth. Ooh, ooh, oh my gosh! Somebody down in middle lane. Yeah, they got these uh, field mics. I'm about to kill one, but I don't want to die for it. Oh no, they got attack helo. Got attack helo. Attack helo. All right, bet, bet, bet. I feel like somebody's gonna come after me though. Come on, let me have it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Somebody gonna come up here and kill me. Oh, I see you. Ooh, I see you. Ooh, Lamb Chops is trying to get me. His name is Lamb Chops? Oh, I don't know. I might not be. I'll be messing. I'm terrible at Luda Chop. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm sorry. Somebody oh. is over there. Oh God! This man keep coming after me. I don't like him. He got that loud outfit on, like. <laughs> oh my God! He's right there. I cannot see anything. Oh, I got him though. Oh, hold on. This person in this. I, what kind of outfit does this person have? I told you. I told you he was loud. He loud. He loud and um swift. Oh my goodness. Uh, stun him or something. I'm with you. I'm behind you. I'm with you. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. No, I'm not going to die like that. I'm going to throw this. <laughs> yeah, they, they getting active. 
Come you gotta on. keep your head on the swivel because these folks is everywhere. They in this window. Ooh, 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 ooh. Just stand outside. Just trying to catch some bullets. Okay, they're gonna. Okay, they, oh, I think we killed all of them because they're 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 spawning over here. Okay. Okay. Um, ooh. It's six. I just want to make sure that I didn't know if we had to turn this off. Are we, we good to keep we, going? We we can go. I do have class at six thirty, but. Oh okay okay. So this will be our last one. Okay. So we. Can I ain't gonna lie. I I kind of I, I I'm kind of <gasps> not feeling class today. You, like you gotta go to class. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, it's my it's my data visualization. Uh, oh, and I'll, I mean, oh Lord, it's my data. I'm taking data visualization and web design. And because okay. I was in in computer science, the biggest gripe my teacher gives me is the fact that I don't turn my work in on time. But he be asking for a lot. I love him, but he be oh, asking for a lot. And I just be like, like he, I turned in something, I think, I ain't gonna lie, I turned in five days late. But the joint was fire. And he was like, I would have given you a 94, but you turned it in late. And I was just like, <laughs> and, he, and it was like, he wanted me to get mad about it. And I was just like, all right. I know myself. Because I guess, like, I got out of that space, too. Like, I think sometimes we can get caught up in, like, our work and giving us value. And your yeah. girl was deep in that. Absolutely. So, um, but he, he be on my neck. <laughs> I'm um, physics set. I'm physics like she's trying to skip class on stream. <laughs> we ain't gonna let her do that. We ain't gonna no. let her. No, it, it's at it's at six thirty. I could do one more because I think each each one is at I think each game is twelve minutes. But I do want to get to the last question. And I know with a ninety year old ninety year old gamer, you're very welcome. I had to make sure I got you. Um, and someone else asked, do you have techniques or ways to have conversations with friends and family about why gaming matters and is important in general? The, you said the pathway of like having conversations with like family and friends, you know, I think I'm like you, is, is that what the question was? I'm so sorry. Um, do you have any techniques or ways to have conversations with friends? Oh, um, you know, this is interesting because, you know, Adrian, I'm like you, you know, I come from a family of like gamers, you know, like. My mom is the one that's telling me how to find like a PlayStation. You know, she's the one that's mm -hmm. like saying, "Hey, look here, baby. Look here, baby." You know, so you know, and then so like with the men in my family, you know, with like cousins, older brothers, you know, they were they were adamant about like, "Hey, if you're gonna be playing games, you're gonna be the best." So they taught us and they took time with us like to help us like understand. So um, I think it was like one of the first times that I thought that I recognized that not everybody, especially not women, we all don't have like the same pathway like into gaming. These are new maps, Echelon and the Zoo. The Echelon. So we'll do, it, which okay. one? Which one? I, I like Echelon because I've been to that one, but we're we going to go to the zoo because I ain't been. To, oh, I have been to the zoo. Is it? Uh oh, it's hard. Well, you okay, so the biggest thing about the zoo is you got to look up because you got them little sneaky folks. Okay, okay. Oh, it's cute. Oh, it's cute. Oh, oh it's you're so very cool. welcome. Is that is that Hungry New Mexican? <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm saying that right. And you're very welcome. Um, Hungry New Mexican said, this has been really awesome. Thanks, Adrian and Dr. Gray. You're very oh, welcome. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. We hope to keep doing this. Like, we have we to should, keep doing this. We just should. I feel like at least once a month, we should just do this, right? Yeah. How right. do you feel about doing this over the summer? I mean, I'm going to be playing video games over the summer, so why not? <laughs> All right. That <laughs> sounds gaming. That sounds good. I will say I will have to take the journey here because I don't have the equipment at home, but I don't mind. I could probably host it. I could host it. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll be on campus all summer, too, so I could probably – I could host it through our eSports folks. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. And to get yeah. back to the question – um, uh, where they asked about like the pathways, I think it was Emma Vossen's, you know, uh, dissertation and important work that made me realize that you know women had different paths and those paths were not not always great, right? You know, so that I, I recognize that some people were like were actively, you know, keeping, you know, like women out of the spaces and not supporting and uplifting like women inside the spaces. And that was wild to me. Right. And so I think that it's just important that we kind of talk about how the importance of, you know, because some people need to say, well, are there any women there? Like, yes, it is. So I think we got to just show that the, our visibility is there. We got to show the representation. We have to show that there are women as gamers, you know, women as audiences, women as like makers and doers, like, you know, engineers and computer scientists inside these spaces as well so we have to show them the, the visibility you know because some um 
And also, I think, especially with parents, so I spent a lot of time talking to parents about like dismantling the assumptions and the myths that a lot of them have like inside the gaming space. You know, a lot of them see it as like spaces that are dangerous. Like, oh, well, my kid, what you doing, girl? What you doing? What are you doing? Who, me? She walking around. No, not you. No, somebody was coming at me with like a hatchet. <laughs> girl, <laughs> like, what you got in your hand? They about to cut oh. you down like a tree. <laughs> Please. I'm like, what you doing? Um, but I think, um, um, and then so, you know, I, I often spend time just dismantling myths associated with what gaming is, right? Like, no, that's not true. Sure, the spaces could be dangerous, but you know, you just have to like equip your young folks with like the tools like to, to protect themselves and to be safe and to recognize the signs, you know, so they don't become, you know, fall victim or prey to somebody that's trying to groom them and stuff, you know? So it's like, just like conversations that you would have in any other space. I think, you know, we have it in gaming. But I don't want like a lot of folks to use like fears. And also thinking back to media, think about mm-hmm. anytime some of these mediated outlets talk about gaming, what are they doing, right? Oh, they talk about like gaming. violence, uh, crime. Yes. I'm like, tell um, another bringing story. up GTA all the time. Um, so like, many other stories that can be told. You know? Like I will say, growing up, GTA was banned in my house. Like I honestly didn't play GTA until maybe two years ago, and I honestly, as an adult, was like, I can see why my family was not with this. <laughs> Like, my, my mom and my dad could not get along on anything after the divorce, but GTA, they were, like, on a united front. That is one of the few things. They were like, you know what? No. It, uh, like, no. Just no. Like, go over there and play some some Spyro or something. Like, <laughs> it was like, yeah, your little friends. That's what they would call them. Your little friends. Your little friends I think it's important that we are, I think it's just important that, you know, we are in front of the conversation around that, you know? So Mm -hmm. I spent, mm, they got me. I spend, you know, time, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, because I know my kids are going to be exposed to it eventually. And I want them to be exposed to stuff like through me. So I can not control the narrative, but help them understand like what they're seeing, what they're experiencing. And I think that parents, I'm even thinking about the time, like, like, so for, like when I grew up, you know, everybody was, it was all bans on like Mortal Kombat, right? Because you know mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton said, "Oh, this is bad." I'm like, "Oh my gosh, Hillary, shut up!" Um, and so, um, but I, my mother was just—I think my mother was like had a curiosity that I think you know I I adopted like the same level of like curiosity of like you know well what is this? Why are people so intrigued by? It? Why are these conversations happening? You know, so I think that I got my my tendency to ask why you know from from my mom, and I think that you know I just I just think that we can. We, we should do that more, you know, as a society, you know, to think about, come from a place of, like, why and curiosity and exploration as opposed to mm-hmm. just, like, cutting things off and, like, you know, seeing, ooh, 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 I'm doing all right this round. I like this map very much. I can't Let me see what I can do. I'm a high by, oh, no. Oh, ooh, you are there. doing, girl. You got an AKD. Look at you over there. Yeah, getting active. That? I know, right? At the end. I said warm up. <laughs> oh, one thing I will say since we were talking about GTA, I do find it very interesting, like, who um, benefits from that game with the depictions that are in that game. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, yeah. I, I tread lightly when speaking on it because it's sure. like, I don't really know, like, you know, I, I, I grew up with some family members that didn't live in a, a very high-income area, and I can't yep. say that all parts of the game are inaccurate. But I will say that it does bother me that that is the highest concentration of representation in the game. Yep. Like, there's no there's no yep. um, balance, and there's yep. really no question. And, like, yep. oh, Absolutely. what are you doing? I think I found that girl with the hatchet you was talking about. Uh, right? She's just running around doing, doing yeah, wild she, stuff. Yeah, she, 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 um, she having a good old time. She don't want to. Um, uh, you're absolutely right. But I think that goes back to also why we urge, you know, urge for more diversity, you know, just a shout out, you know, I need diverse games and Tanya to pass me on the space. I think that's why we urge for more diversity so we can, I mean, cause we all know, like we from the hood and uh, hood adjacent, you know, something. So that's, that's not like, like you said, it's not an inaccurate story, but we just, you know, when we see our, you know, white counterparts or, you know, we, we see all the, the variety of stories that are told about you know those populations and we we urge for the same you know we hope for the same ooh ooh, ooh. yeah and i they're, think they're, know, they're they're all at their they're all at their um spawn point i don't know why they're all over there but they're all at that spawn point where the little they, um ooh look at the score they scared to come out ooh oh yeah we are yeah oh i would be scared oh there's one okay he got me he's like good good job will all right raising sages mhm 
Hey, like, I love in. playing a black character as a kid, but as I got older and I realized the deeper meaning behind you. the ways they were, yeah, the portrayals is really, whew. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really wow. Mm-hmm. Like, even Tomb Raider, like, that's my absolute favorite game, but, like, I ain't gonna lie, as I've gotten older, I realized, like, even though I love that game, there are some legitimate uh-huh. issues with that game. Yeah, absolutely. And I always have to tell folks that, you know, Tomb Raider... You know, Laura Croft was originally Laura Cruz. You know, she had a South American origin story, so they had to whiten her narrative, you know, for, for white audiences, basically. Oh, you know, I like, didn't know that. Yeah, most people have no idea. But, and, and I think that goes back to where, where, like, designers and developers are trying to, have always tried to give us, like, diverse content. Um, but then, you know, at the bottom line, you know, always comes in, you know, people are like, well, will it sell? Will people engage in, you know, will people like this narrative and the story of like, you know, first off, you know, struggle just to get like any any depictions of like women as like, you know, as a hero, but a one woman of color on top of that, you know, they they wouldn't have it, none of that. They wouldn't have in that at all. Hmm. And and smart. Mm-hmm. Ooh, she, ooh. she she know like three languages and she, and she got like the pre Instagram right. body. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think what well, think about how powerful that story would have been because I think part of the origin was like, hey, things were stolen from my culture, you know, from my indigenous cultures, and I'm trying to get them back. You know, think about how powerful mm-hmm. that was. Think about how much we could have told around, retold around. Look at you with this hatchet, girl. If you don't sit down. You know, think about how much we could have told, you know, around, especially having like a decolonial story, talking about settler colonialism um, and thinking about the harms that that has done, you know, to, to populations. Um, it, it could have been a really powerful, you know, impactful story. But instead, a lot of it was just like it was like an Indiana Jones, you know, mm-hmm. it was an Indiana Jones kind of story. It wasn't adding anything to um, to the landscape. Yeah. We yeah. are. Let's look at the. We are mobbing. They quitting now. Oh man, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, they leaving. Oh, that butt hurt. I'm sorry. As a sorry, not really. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I can't let you kill me. Oh, I got a attack helicopter. Let me just lay down. Yeah, girl. Wipe them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I almost had an attack. He what is it? A uh, oh, got him. I almost had an attack healer. Oh, somebody right here or up there. Oh, why'd I do that? Somebody is up there. I'm not in the mood. I, don't, I think I'm good, though. Don't I have my... I think I got my cloak thing on. <coughs> I think I've got... I've got all kind of stuff right here. Okay. Oh, I got that. a turret. Oh, I, I have not used any of this stuff, y'all. Yeah, they all just kind of hiding on their spawn for the last minute or so. Six more kills. Oh, why are you on fire? Bro, what happened to you, cuz? Oh, my goodness. Three more kills. Yeah, we're good to go. We did. These folks dirty, man. We did. Hey, that guy keeps getting me. I will say. He he got me a couple night, night. times. Night, night. Go well, night, night. <laughs> oh, somebody <laughs> somebody asked, have, have either of you played uh, Miles Morales? I have not, but I did um, watch my friend play it. Um, I'm not a big um, superhero video game player. I'm more of a, I, I, may watch, I may watch the movie. But I haven't really been into Spider-Man since Tobey Maguire, honestly. Is that who's your favorite Spider Man? Um, yeah, I like Toby. <laughs> I, I know I know that's not the popular opinion, but Toby Toby got a special place in my heart. I love it. I love it. Cause he was just so Twitter genuine. Be fine Twitter be fine, Toby up. <laughs> they do. They do. I'll be like, yo. I love it. Between think, him and the guy yeah. from Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That is true. Who is this Marvin? Good, good job. Jerome Wick. Oh, okay, go ahead, Kaylin. Um, I love the Miles Morales game. I watched it. I didn't play it, but I, was, I watched my kids play it. It was beautiful. It was yeah. one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. But I will say, I always have felt like um, Insomniac has always been downplayed. Insomniac yeah. always got some good fire games. Like I, Maybe I'm a little biased because that's my grandma's jam, but like I have never put in a Ratchet and Clank that was not I love it. yeah. You know, none of the Ratchet and Clanks, even the PSP ones, all them joints was a bob. All of them. Yeah, all of them was a bob. Absolutely. 
All right, yeah. what time is class? Is class on Zoom or you have to go, you got to walk from it, It's across. It's it's like a building away. I'm not too far. I'm not too okay. far. I'm okay, like, it's like, I, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to wrap. I, I will say I'm going to genuinely wrap up at 630 because he doesn't really start, start. He just sits there and then starts like at 640. Uh, so. All right, Javon, you hear Javon, right? <laughs> okay, so so we're going to play another one, right? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to start it up. Is there a particular <laughs> mode you just want to play or you just want me just to start no, it again? No, we'll just remix it up. Okay. Um, okay. Let me all see right. if I'm missing any questions, but I think... I think I got everything um, as far as, like, hold on, let me see if I got any things in my bank that uh, we could really touch on. We talked about gatekeeping. Yep. Um, we talked about hate raids. Yep. We talked about stereotyping content. Um, yep. We talked about getting recognition for career, mi- for career milestones and stuff like that, supporting one another, finding your group. Um uh, one question I do have is what, in your opinion, is a um, a development studio that does um, minority representation adequately, in your opinion? Oh, my gosh. Well, I've got to shout out the Energize studio. And a lot of people have no idea who Energize is. But this is a, a black studio out of New Orleans. They were the ones that created the black football the black college football experience now most people have no idea what that game is right so everybody google somebody drop a link in there like javon drop a link to the black college football experience for me if you if you get a chance but basically this was like in 2007 and it was a football game that featured hbcus and i thought it was the most beautiful thing that i had ever seen before right but the 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 common percent for those of you some people don't know hbcus i'm learning that i'm realizing that um, but like uh, HBCUs are just historical. This is an old map. Is this old? Is um is our yeah historical yeah this black is the universe? yes I remember the boat. I remember this boat. Okay, what what is this? What are we doing? Capture the flag. So okay. we're we're okay. So we don't okay. We defend it. So there's oh, we have to take okay. That's how it we works. We go get theirs. Okay, so yeah, somebody's going to get theirs. Yeah, I might go mob on them and see what I can get at. Okay, okay, I'll I'll protect this one. I'll stay okay. at the space now. I'll, I'll protect our flag right here. Okay. I'll, Ooh, I'll do my best. Dang, I was looking at chat. um but but it was like it was this dope dope game that featured black excellence and black joy and black pride like just in amazing ways but the common narrative thinking about what journalists did i'll I'll never hashtag never forget journalists were like like i remember them saying that the game was ugly like i remember that being like a common narrative like what do you mean ugly i've never seen like a valuation like that tied to a game this, somebody back here somebody back here y'all i'm, um, trying, trying, to I'm get trying our flag yeah. when they said did they ever explain what they what their yes. definition of I'm ugly was there. my bad i'm getting there no they didn't but basically they said it's not it's a game that doesn't look good cuz they were comparing it to madden they were comparing it to ncaa right no so they were using using that as like a benchmark of of like what what a good you know football game you know could be and and so and i it took, oh, you got the flag? Are they, I, you? They, no, no, girl. I, I ran oh, into the abyss <laughs> and fell. <laughs> um, but. but but a lot of folks, you know, first off, I didn't think that the, the, the six system, the structure could receive that game because they didn't even understand how to see the beauty in that game, right? Because I think, mm-hmm. well, I remember watching some playthroughs and I remember talking about it like in class and so many people, you know, they were, they would play the game but then they would skip. Ooh, they throwing stuff at me. They back here trying to get our. They trying to get our. Trying to get our thing. I, I know. I'm taking this too, so they can get active over there because they. Oh, they kill me. Yeah, they coming. But so Ooh, many of them. Dang. But they would play the first half of, of football and they would skip halftime and then go to the second half. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, like, my what? little. I'm, I'm so like, sorry. My sister I, is in the chat. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Hey, sis. Hi, Isis. Hey, hey, Isis. <laughs> Come on through. I know that's right. Um, but a lot of people, um, but but I recognize, gosh, gosh, gosh. They didn't know how to even, you know, receive mm-hmm. the beauty of the halftime show. Because most of us who are connected to HBCUs, we recognize we don't go for the football. We go for the band. We for real. For, for real. For halftime performance, right? And yes. so, so this game was released and, and inside a structure that had 
no no metric, no analytics, no litmus test to even understand the dopeness and, and how amazing like that game was, right? Mm -hmm. So I always want to shout out, you know, that that company that made that game because I think they were ahead of their time. You know, they were so far advanced that at at at, at talking about having conversations around like black joy, right? You know, because we just started talking about, you know, in academic ways, you know, Black Joy just really recently. But I'm mm -hmm. like, there have been all the, these folks, and especially that company in particular, that was like, hey, um, there are some really powerful narratives that can be told that's not GTA, that's not, you know, like, you know, Black struggle stories, that's not, you know, like trauma porn or whatever. Um, and they recognized that, and the system just didn't know how to accept them or realize it. I also like to shout out Momo Pixel. Now, I know she's not connected to a studio, but she does, like, really dope stuff. She's the creator mm -hmm. of Hair Nah. So I always love to shout out, you know, Momo Pixel for giving us, again, a lot of, you know, I think, I think you know, Momo's, like, at the intersection of, you know, black joy, but also pain and struggle, and also, like, hey, you know, these things happen to us, and, and putting them in, like, like legible and tangible ways so that we could understand like the politics of black hair you know it you know just will and will and jada and chris they ain't gonna be the only ones that can control the narrative around you know like black hair politics oh my gosh yeah oh my gosh it was so funny that everybody was like was sharing like chris rock's documentary i'm like that's the worst thing that you, i hated that documentary yeah but, but it anyway, wasn't <laughs> not great um but you know that game you know put those kinds of conversations like at the forefront you know so i always like to shout out my little pixel and hair and all you know for what the model um, of inclusive black excellence can be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree. And when you were t explaining to me how they received the halftime show, it reminded me of something you said earlier about people always trying to compare something yeah. to something else. And I think that's a big part of that issue. Like, yeah. it what it wasn't meant to be compared. It, it was supposed to it's stand alone. Yeah. Absolutely. It's its own thing. Mm -hmm. and it don't need to be compared absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and, I, and I realize when there is like an indie game or like a game that is um, like the team is not the mainstream or the triple A's of the world they always like to speak on like um, how the game looks and not the content I feel like almost like some Martin Luther King stuff like not the content of the character but how it looks like and it's just not fair and I think like that bothers me it's like you're so caught up in you want it in 4k so you can use your teraflops but the game is fire though like yeah and, 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 I, and I always notice that with um with like indie games they're like oh well you know it's only got like um a top view uh, you know, perspective. It would have been nice if it had X, Y, Z, but it's like, why oh can't you just gosh. take what you can get, you know? Just like, what, just, just take what these creators give you. Yeah. Just, just sit down and eat your food. <laughs> <laughs> sit down and eat your food. Oh, my gosh. Finish your vegetables before you ask That's for seconds. Right, right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. These folks be, oh, they're just so wild, especially the things that they ask and are expecting of a lot of these developers. And that's why, you know, that we got so much burnout. You know, there's so much, like, think about crunch and think about all these awful practices that, you know, that are in the gaming industry as well. You mm -hmm. know, these folks put up with a lot. And then if somebody don't like the game, then they gonna drag you and dox you on Twitter. I'm like, what is wrong with these folks? Yeah, like the same thing that happened with um with Cyberpunk. Like how they dragged the game. They dragged that game so hard. I'm like, and it's I was... okay to, right. And it was just wild. Like, what's the purpose of that? You know, what, yeah. what's the utility of that? You know, like we got, we got, we got bad games all the time. Like mm -hmm. we, and, and what's good about this generation is that at least the folks can fix the game. We got patches and badges and updates and stuff. Like, so ET was just gonna be bad. ET, what no, what no hope <laughs> for Poe ET? You know, I always like, oh my gosh, when I watched the documentary, I was, I was laughing. I felt so bad for them. I was laughing, but um, but but still, there's, I, I just, there's so much entitlement. You know, I think you know what's ha Oh, he got the flag. I don't care. Oh, hold up. Oh, hold up. no. They getting, oh, they're in there. They're in the middle. They're like yeah, in the middle. And they got yeah. somebody hold them down. And then we have a guy. Oh, we got him. They got him. I'm so, I'm not going to lie. I kind of, I kind of, because the conversation got good, I started forgetting what I'm here for. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what I'm doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, play. what are we doing? Oh, yeah. Just running oh, outside. Oh, yeah. uh, no. Wild. Okay, we got our flag. Yeah. And, and exactly. Um, yeah, Poison Fairy, I do feel that. Like, I feel like when it comes to games that get a lot of drum, like, about what's going to happen, like, it's, like, almost no room for error. And I feel like that's so unreasonable. And I don't know right. why people want to be unreasonable. I don't know. But it just, 
It's like you don't realize these people have sacrificed holidays and doing things with everything. their kids. Like everything. <laughs> everything, right? Mm -hmm. Just so you can have a video game so you can just go and just be trash on the internet. Like, come on now. Class is at 630. This is going to be my last one, I promise. This is, yes. a, this is my last <laughs> one. Javon. <laughs> He's not playing with me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Exactly, Ferret. Exactly, Ferret. Ferret's like, why isn't everything perfect forever from version 1.0? Absolutely. Yeah, That's like, no. It, it's not realistic. Like, what have you done from version 1.0 that was perfect? Let me, feel, right. let me find out. <laughs> right. Right. It's a draft. The release date as draft. That's draft one of that game. Oh, they got the flag, y'all. Ooh, in the middle. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, get a. Ooh. Okay, I'm just gonna run. I think I'm spending <laughs> too much time like looking at the map. I be looking like, oh, this is cute. Ooh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think I think they got us because they got airstrikes. They got all kinds of. Stuff they got all right types now. of things they've been holding back for Christmas. Oh my gosh, and I can't even get there now. Cause they got somebody up here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, they got a whole Yeah, they have a um they have a strife run. I'ma just go inside. I'm going it's time to go in the house. It's just time to go in the house. Oh my, they're spawn killing us. I can't even make it out of spawn, y'all. I can't make it out of spawn. These folks doing us dirty. Yeah. I mean, but they Oh, hold up. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to put together in my mind. Is it because they, I think I think they almost have to do like basketball. Like they have to take it and then run it to the other side. I think that's how that works. Mm -hmm. yeah, they got to basketball it. And they've been basketballing a little bit. I'm thinking about what 90 year old gamer just said. You know, think about the the hype that was around it, right? But mm -hmm. it was so much like mediated hype and hype like around it, you know, where, you know, think about streamers. Think about the role that streamers had. Think about the role that E3 had, right? So all these folks were trying to tell somebody else's story, right? And mm -hmm. then, you know, Cyberpunk was like, you know, y'all gotta wait, y'all gotta wait. Like, all right, y'all wanna, here you go. Mm -hmm. so, here it is. Like, we was telling y'all to wait and stuff. That's, that's a good point when we think about, you know, the hype around stuff. Yeah, I think it's I think it's unfair. Like again, kind of going back to my my professor, I love him, but he he stressed me. But like that whole you got to have it done by this time. And my whole yeah. thing sometimes is like, you know, yeah. what they say, good things come to those who wait. And I think sometimes, <laughs> oh, right. and I think some, and it's not like people are like lazy or like they don't want to give you a good right. product. It's not like they don't right. want to satisfy you it's like they're just saying right. hey can you give me a month like can you give me Absolutely. six months and it's like and it's just and honestly it's from a place of like yeah we've been working on this three years and we want to show you what three years looks like you know and I think right. people are just like I want it now you told me this one thing and it gets so transfixed and I think it's just so unfair right. absolutely absolutely now I'm telling everybody I'm not starting no other game yeah we the we're I'm good like, it's 6:28. It's time to walk across the hall. Or yeah. walk where you gotta go. <laughs> but I just, <laughs> but I just want to thank you again, Dr. Gray, for giving me your time, for being so just amazing, um, oh, being so um, eye-opening with your perspective. Um, I just would love to do this with you again. Um, I'm hoping we could do it maybe before the semester ends, maybe in two weeks. I don't know what your schedule is looking like. We'll, we'll get out. together. Reach out to me. I love it. But, Let's do it. But um, I just appreciate everything, especially your time and, you know, giving us so much great information um, and just being, being you. I just appreciate Thank it. You. I appreciate you, Adrian. Thank you for having me. No problem. And I like to thank everybody else for submitting questions, being engaging. <laughs> thank you, Isis. <laughs> being engaging, um, you know, just – being with the with this because I really do want this to be an ongoing thing and I never thought that I would be doing this stuff for the university so I am just so blessed to just have all of y'all giving me your time on a Thursday and um yeah just thank you um I will definitely be on Twitter um I'll drop my Twitter handle um Dr. Gray did you want to drop yours in the chat as well and you know you can follow us and is this my Twitter? I don't know. I don't know because I'm not used to putting my name outside. So I've been doing good. I've been actually connecting things to my name. <laughs> not doing aliases. So this is where you can find me on Twitter. And um, 
you know, I'll definitely shoot out another, um, you know, post when we do something again. And everything is just everything. And I just, appre- again, I just appreciate everybody giving me their time and, you know, everybody who helped me bring this stuff together, you know, teachers who listened to me before I got here, you know, Dr. Gray, I just, I just really appreciate everybody and everything. Thank so, you. I appreciate you. No problem. But thank you, everybody. And I'll see you all soon. Go to class. I am. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>